Hello everyone, my name is Kristen Sanford and I'm going to be talking to you today about my digital literacy curriculum project. So the top five challenges in teaching and learning with technology include the development of 21st century information, digital and visual literacies to ensure that students are equipped with the skills needed to succeed in college and future careers. So digital literacy is broadly defined as using technology to find, evaluate, analyze, and communicate information. My research question for my project was, how does the implementation of digital literacy benefit students? So when talking about digital literacy, another term that comes up frequently is digital media. So digital media includes any format of device used to convey content using digital signals. So basically digital media would be like interactive web pages, video games, mp3 players, ebooks, digital television, those types of things. Um, so the themes of my project, uh, the first one is not all adolescents are digital natives. My second theme is empowering students using digital media. And my third theme um, is strategies that educators can implement within their classroom. The main focus of my project is gonna be on the strategies that teachers can implement. Um, so that's where most of my focus will be. Um, so theme one, not all adolescents are digital natives. So, um, Millennials are basically described as uh, people who have grown up surrounded by technology. So even though those um, people that would fall in that group are surrounded by technology, they don't always know the proper ways to use technology or analyze information on the internet. So even though millennials have been surrounded by modern technology, they're not as competent as they seem to be. So our job as educators is to make sure that those students are prepared and educated enough to make valid decisions um, based on information that they might find on the internet. Uh, for example, when young ladies age 9 to 17 encounter advertising about weight loss products, they are cognitively vulnerable with limited ability to recognize persuasive construction strategy, strategies, including message, purpose, target audience, and subtext. So um, what that basically say, is saying is that those women between 9 and 17 are easily persuaded by the ads that are being shown to them. So if we as educators can teach them not to be swayed by the information that's presented to them, but to teach them to question and analyze that information, um, that skill will help them later on in life and for future years. Uh, theme number two, empowering students using digital media. Um, educate educators can foster that sense of creativity by using web 2.0 tools in their classroom. So one of the case studies I came across in my research focused on building student confidence by creating an outreach program that services underprivileged youth that don't have access to technology. Um, I was really interested in this uh, research paper that I found because um, my students would fall under that category. There are a lot of students that I have um, within our district that are underprivileged and don't have access to technology. So those students would be lacking in our classrooms if educators didn't teach them the digital literacy skills they needed to be successful. Um, so that specific case study proved that online learning spaces can ease middle level students transition to high school by providing them with skills that they can travel um, with throughout their formative years and beyond, um, which is really my goal. Um, my project focuses on 11th grade students, so I want these students to be able to leave my classroom feeling confident in their digital literacy skills that can help them either um, if they find a career or if they're going to college. Um, an outcome of that study was that the students reported uh, that they looked forward to the classes and they became advocates for the program and encouraged their peers to apply for the program as well. So the students were really involved in that program and wanted to share that information with their peers, which is always a good thing. Uh, theme number three, digital literacy strategies for the classroom. So like I said before, this is gonna be my main focus. Um, I know as educators, we get bombarded with new strategies that everyone wants us to implement and we take a look at it and we're like, well, I don't really know if that'll work for me. 
So when I was creating this project, I kept that idea in mind that um, I wanted to make a project that teachers could look at and determine I can use that and then follow my example and my lead. So since I'm a history teacher, all of my examples in my project are history based, but I want other teachers of other curriculum areas to be able to look at the strategies and be like, yeah, I can totally use that and then just use them in their classrooms. Um, so since most teachers are not considered digital natives, um, I don't want that to hinder teachers stepping out of their comfort zone and implementing these strategies. So um, I want them to let go of the fear that they have and turn it into a learning opportunity. Use your students as experts within the classroom. They enjoy that and you get to see a part of your students that um, you might not know about. Like let's say you have a musician in your classroom and, in, and is using SoundCloud to make music. Um, maybe they can bring their knowledge of SoundCloud into the classroom so you get to see that side of them that you might not know. Um, those Web 2.0 tools are a great, great way to encourage students to enhance their digital literacy skills. So Web 2.0 tools, they're basically um, just strategies on the internet, technology, so basically they're like blogs, wikis, podcasts, photo sharing, video sharing, any of those sites where you're basically sharing your knowledge or your skills with everyone else in the world. Um, so for my project, I wanted to focus on beginner level strategies and also or intermediate level to advanced level strategies as well. Um, so like beginner level would be like using Google Docs, Google Classroom, and the more advanced level would be like video sharing, um, online gaming, virtual field trips, that sort of thing. The web 2.0 tools that I used in my project, I started with Google Docs. That's pretty easy. Um, Google Docs is relatively user friendly. Um, I use that um, along with Google Classroom. Uh, Google Classroom allows you to post um, basically any type of media that the students might need all at once so they all have access to it. Um, it's a great way for educators to differentiate as well without the students knowing because on Google Classroom you can pick what students get what material. So if you don't want your students um, knowing that another student's reading level is a little bit lower, you can modify um, the information that you're giving that student without the other students knowing. So that's great. Um, I also use an online game in my project. It's uh, called the Jamestown Adventure. And Canva. Canva is a website where students can uh, create online digital posters or ads. I really like Canva because it's more creative than like Microsoft Publisher or Google Docs um, and it gives the students a chance to be more creative. Um, and I also use digital storytelling. Uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, Google Slides you can use for digital storytelling, Windows Movie Maker, that sort of thing. Um, so my project outline, day one I'm going to start with a pre-evaluation survey just to get a base level of where my students are at with their digital literacy skills because I'm going to use that to show their growth over um, time. Uh, day one is also going to focus on uh, like acceptable use, copyright information, plagiarism. I want my students to know um, what is acceptable and what isn't on the internet and that goes for like digital citizenship as well. Um, like how they should be acting on the internet. Um, like for example like cyberbullying because my um, project focuses on students posting their work to Google Classroom and having their students comment back about that work. I don't want the students to negatively comment about someone else's work. I want them to be appropriate. So day one is where we're going to set um, the standards for that. So moving forward, the students know what is acceptable and what isn't. Um, day two is where we're going to get into U.S. History Unit 1, which is Colonial Foundations. Uh, so students are going to be examining the impacts of European colonialization on Native Americans who eventually lost much of their land and experienced a drastic decline in population through diseases and armed conflict. So that's day one where we're going to use uh, Google Docs. I'm going to split the kids up into group, 
have them analyze documents using the soapstone strategy and then once they've analyzed those documents reporting back to their group about what they learned what their opinions were um, that sort of thing so you're getting the students to use the technology and digital media but we're also having them collaborate in a group format as well um, day three students are going to examine the impacts of geographic factors on patterns of settlement and the development of colonial economic systems this is the day that they're going to use the online jamestown adventure game the game goes through um, multiple different uh, questions the students have to decide where they would land their ship um, what crops they would grow, how they're going to interact with the Native Americans. And then when they're done with that game, the game gives them a ranking system on how well they did. So for their economy, if their economy was well based on the crops that they grew, it would say that your economy was great. Um, if your interaction with the Native Americans wasn't so good, they'll say that that was poor. So with that summary, the students have to take that information go on to Canva and create a digital poster um, depicting how their Jamestown ended up. Um, and then they're going to have to compare that to the real Jamestown, which that information they would have gotten in class through our classroom discussions. Um, so they should be able to see a, a real difference there between what happened in actual Jamestown versus what happened in their online version of Jamestown. Um, Day four of the project is the final um, category for the unit where the students have to analyze um, uh, documents that influence the colony's political development. So that would be like Enlightenment ideas, the Magna Carta, those types of things. So those are some pretty um, important documents that the students have to know and understand in order to be successful in the course. Um, so the students are going to take a look at those, again, using Google Docs and Google Classroom. Um, and then the little twist with this one is that once they have analyzed the documents, they're randomly going to be given um, either the viewpoint of a colonist or the viewpoint of a British citizen. And based on the documents that they read, they have to prove whether they're for or against democracy in the 13 colonies. Um, they're going to do this by creating a digital story. So they're going to act as if they are a colonist or if they're a British citizen using the information that they learned from their um, documents that they had to read. Um, that's going to take some time um, to analyze those documents and to create the digital storytelling. Um, but that's the end of the unit. So they'll work on that as a project for the end of the unit. Um, and it'll be a good segue into Unit 2 because Unit 2 is all about um, like the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution. So at this point in time, since we're at the end of the unit, I would give the students the post-evaluation survey, um, which I'm just looking to see if they've made any sort of growth. I'm not looking for 100% mastery with their digital literacy skills. I'm just looking to see that they've made some gains. Now, for my project, time-wise, I only did this one unit. Um, if I were implementing this in my classroom, I would do this a post-survey at the end of the year. Um, so, in conclusion, implementing digital literacy strategies into your lesson plans every day, or at least once a unit, will help familiarize your students with the proper skills to navigate the internet and technology.